This is the Let's Pretend story of Melilot. Hello, pretenders. Hello, Uncle Ted. Say, you've all heard the expression, appearances are deceiving, haven't you? Sure. And sometimes people say, you can't tell a book by its cover. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Both sayings yeah. mean the same thing. You can't always tell what a person is like from his looks. And it's certainly lucky for the three young men in our story that a young girl named Melilot didn't go by appearances. And now, Matthew, suppose you tell us how we travel to meet Melilot. Well, I'd like to fly, Uncle Ted, only not in an airplane. On the back of an eagle, I think. Well, now, that ought to be both fast and exciting. Everybody want to travel on an eagle's back? You, you bet. bet. Okay, Emily, will you take charge of the magic? Certainly, Uncle Ted. Magical sound men, every one of us would like an eagle to fly us right to Let's Pretend and our story of Melilot. One... Two, three! Aren't they cute? And there we are. Quiet now, you birds, while we all get on your backs. Ready? I'm ready. Hold tight, everybody. Let's go. Once upon a time, Three brothers lived in a rich green countryside dotted with lakes, rivers, and waterfalls. On their own land was the magic spring, which was the source of the water, and the brothers guarded it faithfully. But then, one day, an evil sorceress named Madame Hatrod came to them with a terrible request. I want that spring. If I had control of it, I could do what I wished for this valley. Let me have it. And I'll reward you handsomely. Let you have it? Never. Our father left it to us as a sacred trust. The whole water supply of the valley depends on that spring. And I know what you'd do. You'd let the valley dry up and become a desert. <laughs> and what would you care? You'd be rich enough to go wherever you wanted. It's hopeless, Madam Hatrod. We'll never sell you the spring. And you'll never find out from us the magic words that control it either. So you might as well give up your wicked plans right now. This valley is going to stay rich and green forever. Oh, you think so, do you? Well, I gave you your chance to profit from the deal. Now let me warn you. Give me that spring. Tell me the magic words, or I'll put you under such a dreadful enchantment you'll rue the day you were born. You wouldn't dare. Oh, wouldn't I? I give you till tomorrow night to make up your minds. Then I'll be back to see if you haven't reconsidered. Till tomorrow night, my friends. <laughs> She should be along any minute now, brothers. Yes, it's completely dark now. I... I wonder what sort of enchantment she plans for us. Something very unpleasant, without a doubt. Are you sure, brothers, you don't want to change your minds and give Hatrod what she wants? Let her have the spring so she can dry up every river and brook in the valley? Listen. Hear our own stream rushing along in the darkness? Should that sound be stilled and never heard in the valley again? Every farm for miles around would be ruined. Hundreds would starve because of us. We can't let it happen, whatever she does to us. I agree. Good for you, brothers. That's how I feel, too. Let her do her worst. Listen, that wind. <coughs> and that raven. She's coming. <coughs> Hatrod's coming. <coughs> yes, I am here for your answer. Good heavens. Madam Hatrod's the raven. I transformed myself into a raven to show you how easy enchantments are for me. I can transform you three into anything if you choose to defy me. So come now. Do I get the spring? No, Hatrod, you do not. Ah! What? What are you saying? We defy you, witch. You shall not have the spring. Then look your last on each other in your natural forms. And hear now what your doom shall be. Since you are so fond of water, 
From now on, bear the mark of your devotion. From now on, be half men, half frog. Oh, 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 no, with no. hideous frog heads and frog legs. Go on, guard your spring. Gods of thunder, make it so. <laughs> And your home, from now on, let it be a dirty, filthy hovel, suitable for such monsters as you are. And now, farewell, my ugly friend. <laughs> no longer Robert, Richard, and William, but Squudge, Splash, and Wart. You'll have plenty of time from now on to consider your mistake. And so Hatrod's terrible enchantment fell on the three brothers. And it seemed there was no way to end it. At first they had thought they would go down in the valley and ask if anyone, anywhere, knew of a magic greater than Hatrod's. But whoever saw the brothers in their hideous form ran screaming away from them. So they returned to the hovel that was their home and tried to find help in books. Oh, it's no use. There's nothing in these books that tells how to end a spell like Hatrod's. Well, we must face it, brothers. We're doomed for life to live in the filth and squalor of this cabin. Too hideous for any of our fellow men to look at. Hopping about on these horrible frog legs. Wait. Brothers, listen to this. You found something? A way to break the enchantment? No, not that, Squudge, but a hint, a clue as to where we might go to get help. Well, what does it say? Splash, have you ever heard of the nymph of the oak? The nymph of the oak? No. No, I... Oh, wait a minute. Uh, doesn't she dwell in the forest of Fen in the next kingdom? That's right. I've heard of her. Well, it says in this old book, she knows the answer to every enchantment under the sun. Then we must go to her at once. Yes. What are we waiting for? But Splash, Squudge, now think a minute. It's miles, hundreds of miles to the forest of Fen. We'll have to hop all the way. And we'll have to stay away from towns and settlements, too. Would you let that stop you, Splash? Never. If there's a chance anywhere in the world to find out how to be free, I say, let's go. All right then, brothers. Let the way be long and hard. If we find the way to freedom, at the end of it, it's worth it all the way. Come, let us start at once. Well, the way was long and hard. For many weary weeks, the brothers traveled. But at last, they entered the forest of Fen and found their way to the magic oak where dwelled the nymph they sought. Now they're standing by the tree. Brothers, perhaps the simplest thing would be just to speak quietly and explain our trouble. All right. You do it, Wirt. Nymph of the oak, we stand before you three brothers, transformed into such a shape that none of our fellow men can bear to look at us. It is the doing of the evil sorceress Hatrod who was angry because we would not sell or give her our spring for her own wicked uses. Nymph of the Oak, can you tell us how we may be free? Why doesn't she answer? Shh. Listen. The leaves are stirring. Hear me, brother. She speaks. A voice comes from nowhere. First to serve and say no word. Then be served and served again. At last release so long deserved. We'll change you back again to men. Wart, she's told us. But the meaning, uh, the meaning of her words. First to serve and say no word. Then be served. Nymph of the Oak, you mean someone must serve us? But who, who when no one can bear to look on us? Only so may the spell be broken. Return to your home now. I have spoken. Now the brothers were almost as unhappy as before. All through the long journey toward home, they asked themselves how the nymph's words could possibly come true. While they were still a long way from home, night fell, and a terrible storm broke. 
never known such a storm. The rain comes down in torrents. Oh, for once being half frogs is an advantage of a sort. Just the same. Just the same. I wish we could find some sort of shelter. Wait. Look ahead through the trees, Wart. Isn't that a light? It is. There's a cottage of some sort there. But brothers think we can't just go to the door and ask for shelter. We'd frighten whoever lived there out of their wits. Oh, that's true. Brothers, that crack of lightning. Look out! That tree was struck. It's falling. Look! Hell on that cottage with the roof smashed in. Oh, heaven help whoever lives there. Oh, what can I do? What can I do? Listen, it's the voice of a girl, and she's terrified. Brothers, yes. We have to offer help, at least. We can tell her there's no need to be frightened. We are enchanted to these forms. Squudge, no. Remember the nymph of the oak? First to serve and say no word. Maybe, maybe this is our opportunity. But remember, not a word of explanation, just the offer of help. All right, but let's hurry. The door is this way, brothers. Come on. Whoever you are. Oh, my goodness. Who, what, what are you, creatures? Do not be frightened, little maiden. However fearsome we look, we only wish to help you. But I... I... We understand you must be shocked at first sight of us, but please let us help you. We know the tree crashed into your roof. We heard you crying. Brothers, look inside. The roof timbers have crashed in. Rain's pouring in. Let us haul the tree off the roof and patch it for you. Please. Oh, oh, sirs, forgive me. You are very kind, and I, I have been very rude. Won't you please come in out of the rain? Brothers, did you hear? She asks us in. She'll let us serve. Oh, oh, you, you hop. You have men's bodies and frogs' legs. Please don't be frightened. We can't help it. You see, we... Shh. Say no word, brother. Oh, oh forgive me. I, your voices are gentle. I didn't mean to gasp. Here, let me close the door. And if you can help me, I will appreciate it very much. I'm all alone here. Father had to go on a journey. And all was well till the storm struck. All will be well again in no time. Have you hammers and nails, little maiden? Oh, yes, yes, and I'll get them at once. And my name is Melilot, gentlemen. Melilot. And you call us gentlemen. Won't you tell me your names? We are known now as Squudge, Splash, and Wart. Ugly names for ugly creatures. No, don't say that. I'm glad to meet you all, and you're wonderful to help me. I'll go get the hammer and nails at once. Brothers, the first part of the nymph's requirements is coming true. Ah, but there's all the rest of it, Wart. Is it possible we'll be served and served again? This little maiden, Melilot, has already proved herself different from anyone who has ever seen us. But will she fulfill all the requirements? Shh, she's coming back. And our fate is in her hands. Yes. From now on, our fate depends on Melilot. Splash, hold the light over here for a moment. That's it. Here we go. Melilot, the last nail, and the roof is fixed. Throw down the hammer, Wart. Slide down those extra boards, Splash. Oh, I don't know how to thank you, all of you. Look out below. I'm jumping down. Here I come. Yes, the roof is snug as can be now. I can see that. You fixed it good as new. Oh, but you must be very tired. Not a bit, Melilot. It was good to work. But now you must come into the cottage. I fixed a fire so it's warm and cozy. You must rest. That's right. Come on in. Oh, thank oh, you. We'd we'll be glad you're all very, very good in. now. Ah, it is cozy in here and so clean. Oh, how nice it would be to live once more like this. Splash. Shh. But it's true. Everything does shine. And you keep house all by yourself for your father, Melilot? Yes, and I'm glad you think things look nice, but, oh, I know that most of all you must be hungry now, and and it's just because Father's been gone so long, and and just tonight, just tonight... Melilot, what's wrong? 
Don't cry, please don't. Just tell us what's wrong. Well, you've worked so hard for me, and more than anything, I'd love to serve you a real meal, but I, I, I haven't eaten a single crust of bread to offer you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> what was that? Melilot, look. Look on the table. Why, there's a full loaf of bread <laughs> and a pitcher filled with milk, but, but where on earth did they come from? First, to serve, then be served. She wanted to serve us, you know. Oh, but I shan't ask where the food came from. I'm just so glad I have something to offer you now. Here, I'll break the bread into three parts and divide the milk. There you are. Now, please, sit down, eat, and enjoy yourself. Oh, and I do have some honey in the pantry. I'll go get it. Splash, the squatch. You saw that bread and milk appear out of nowhere? We certainly did. Magic's working for us now. What's more, she's surely hungry. But she divided the bread and milk and kept nothing for herself. Dare we give her some of ours? Or would that, would that go against the nymph's instructions? Then be served and served again. I don't know, Wart. Here we are. Here's honey for your bread. Oh, it looks wonderful, Melilot. But w won't you share our feast? Oh, no, I... I'm not hungry, truly. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> another loaf of bread. Another pitcher of milk out of nowhere. Now, will you admit you're hungry, Melilot? Well, <laughs> now that there is enough for all of us, yes, I guess I will have some bread and milk. Mmm, it does taste good. Mm. <clears throat> Doesn't it? And to think it came by magic. Is there... Is there something special about you three that brings magic like this? I think there's something special about you, Melilot. About me? <laughs> oh, no. That's where you're wrong. You let us help you, then you fed us. And now I'm going to see to it you all three go to bed, too. I don't know where you live, but it's much too late for you to travel on tonight, <coughs> tired as you are. You must stay here. There's plenty of room in here, and I'll sleep in a hammock out in the porch. It'll be lovely sleeping there now that the storm is over. Come now, one bedroom's over there. The other one is right next. So to bed with you all. <laughs> and a very good night. Come, brothers. Good night, Melanie. Good night. Poor things. Poor kind creatures. Hopping so awkwardly. And to think I was frightened of them when I first saw them. I only wish there was some way to help them. For somehow I'm sure they need help. Well, time for me to go out to my hammock. Good night, Splash, Squatch, and Ward. Sleep well. Are you ready, Sister Terry? I am. With all my heart, the spinning wheel is ready. Then let our magic start. Moon, send your beams to us, silvery bright. Wind, start your spinning with breeze, hot and light. all of your foam and your frost. Weave us the loveliest fairy like cloth. Why, why, what in the world is happening? Am I dreaming? Those two tiny creatures there on the grass. And is that a spinning wheel? Ha, ha, ha. watching our spinning and weaving. Melilot watching with wide open eyes. Melilot wondering what we are making. Melilot going to have a I'm not dreaming. Those are fairies. I see them. I hear them. Put all our magic into the spinning. The cloth must be finished before we are through. Now fold it and carry it. Lay it down gently at the feet of sweet Melanot, loving and true. Oh, wait. Please tell me. Why, oh, they're gone. And I'd be sure I've been dreaming but for this bundle of snowy white cloth at my feet. Oh, it's beautiful. What shall I do with it? I know. My new friends, Squidge, Splash, and Wart, their shirts are all torn and tattered. I'll make each one of them a new one. Tonight, while they're asleep, I'll make them so they'll be ready in the morning. That's something I can do to make them happy. <laughs> Thank you. 
Squatch. Ward, wake up quickly. Look here. What, what is it, Squatch? Hey, what's the matter? Look at these shirts. Three of them. Why, how beautiful they are. And they're made by hand. Every stitch. Melalot made them. Made them all herself for us. Brothers, once again she served us. First to serve and say no word, then be served and served again. Brothers, let's put on these shirts. Let's put them on quickly. So, my arm in one armhole, then in the other. Brothers, look at me. The miracle has happened. William, you are yourself again. The spell is ended. Now, I. And I. Look, oh, brothers, we're oh, back again. Oh, it's oh, a fire of America. Oh, Robert, Richard, to see you again in your natural form. But look, out the window there, there's our good angel still sleeping in her hammock. Come, come quickly, both of you. We must thank her. Yes, yes, but how can we ever thank her enough? Look, we walk as men again. Shh, here she is, her eyes fast closed. And look. Her dress is as tattered as our old shirts were. But it was us she thought of, not herself. Melilot, I kiss the hem of the ragged dress you wear that we might be clothed as we are. Look! Her dress is transformed to finest silk. And there are jewels twined in her hair. Brothers, our gratitude works magic too. Look, I kiss the wall of the cottage which sheltered us. And the cottage is transformed to a splendid home. Shh, she's waking. Oh, my goodness. It, oh, it's bright daylight. Oh, oh, who are you three? Dear Melalot, look at the shirts we wear. Shirts you made for us. But I made them for three poor, ugly... Yes, you made them for Squudge, Splash, and Wart, three poor enchanted brothers. But your loving kindness has broken the enchantment, Melalot. And now you see us as we truly are. Robert, Richard, and William, your most devoted friends forever. Oh, oh, it's a miracle. And how glad I am. Oh, you look so handsome. Oh, if you're dressed so richly, you'll be ashamed of... Why, look, my dress, it's of silk. And my hair... Jewels are twined in my braids. Why, I too am transformed. <laughs> and your little house, Melilot, do you see it now? Oh, everything is so beautiful now. Oh, no, brothers. Listen. What? I only hear a raven talking. A raven? Can it be Hatrod the witch? It is. It must be. She's discovered the enchantment is broken. Ah, ah. William, what shall we do? These shirts Melalot wove for us. They're magic. Quickly, brothers, take them off. But I don't understand. Oh, that bird, he's lighting right before you. Ah. Who has dared undo my enchantment? Quickly, brothers, throw the shirts over her. Bind her legs with them. Ah, ah. Let me go. Let me go. Ah. Tie her feet together. Oh, but you're hurting her. She can't break through the magic cloth. I was right. Why are you treating her so hard? Melilot, this creature you see as a raven is really an evil witch, Madame Hatrod. It was she who enchanted us. She's cruel and evil, Melilot. Don't go near her. Oh, I can't believe it. Oh, poor little raven. I do not fear you. I love you. See? I stroke your wings. Ah! Go away! Go away! Kiss your shining black head. Oh. oh, what have I done? Where is she? What happened? Look, brothers, where the raven stood, there's just a, a lump of mud. Only a lump of black mud. The raven's gone. The witch is gone. And it's Melilot's doing. Oh, brothers, isn't it clear now? Hatred and evil cannot live where love is. Hatrod had to die when Melilot kissed her. The love in Melilot's heart can accomplish every miracle. It's true. True indeed. Dear Melilot, thanks to you, the valley is safe forever from the schemes of this witch. We can all live happily from now on, thanks to the love in your heart. <laughs>